Hey, what's up everybody? It's Coach Matt Ellis, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Welcome back to the channel. As I explained in our last video, we're gonna be going through some of the indoor track and field videos of the past, and we're gonna be revising those videos a little bit, updating those videos a little bit, and what better place to start than with how to properly hold a shot in your hand. So one of the biggest corrections that always happens every single time I do a track and field camp or a track and field clinic or one of our big overnight summer camps is that when I start working with the glide shot putters and the rotational shot putters, we always start talking about how do you properly hold a shot in your hand. And a lot of times the athletes will just simply pick up a shot, they'll put it up against their neck, they'll kind of throw it up there, and they'll go, okay, I'm, I'm ready to compete, I'm ready to throw, what's next? And really what you need to do is take a really good hard look at your throwers, make sure they are holding this in their hand properly, make sure they're putting it up against their neck properly so they get a really good release, a really smooth release, and get the most amount of distance possible on their throws. All right, so here is step one. Step one is I will actually show the athletes. I'll gather them around. It might be a group of 10 or 12 athletes. I'll gather them around and I will show them the shot. And I'll put the shot in my hand and I will show them that there are two parts to your hand. The first part is the palm. Now you can see this is in the palm of my hand. It is nowhere near my fingers. So you have the palm and then you have the fingers which I call the basket. So you've got the palm and you've got the basket. Now at this point, your athletes, the kids are not holding this in their hands. They're watching you. So you just show them back and forth. You've got the palm and the basket, the palm and the basket, the palm and the basket. And you show them that you have all four of your fingers underneath the shot You've got your thumb on the side, kind of underneath on the side of the shot, and you are holding it in the basket of your hand. Step number two, you're gonna have the athletes pick up the shots. Maybe they have to share, maybe there's two or three athletes per shot. They're gonna pick up the shot, and they're gonna work on going from the basket to the palm, to the basket, to the palm. And they're basically just gonna sit there, and they're gonna roll it back and forth. Now you can show them if they've been in the gym and they've got calluses on their hands, you want it to be in those fingers, in that basket. You don't want it on the other side of the calluses in their palm. You want it on this side of the calluses in their fingers in that basket. And that's basically all there is to it. It's like rinse and repeat. You've got the palm, you've got the basket. But the number one thing that I want them to take away is that they don't have their hands kind of clawed around it, like this eagle claw kind of thing, where they've got all their fingers kind of wrapped around it and they've got a death grip on it. It's really just sitting in those fingers. It's sitting in that basket. Okay, the other way you can explain it is it's kind of like a diving board where there's a little bit of springiness to it. Just like if you were gonna jump off a diving board, you don't jump off the part that's closest to the cement you jump at the end of the diving board where it's a little bit springy, where it's got a little bit of kind of bounce, a little bit of boing to it, okay? So that's what you wanna do. All four fingers underneath, and if you walk around and they are holding it, maybe they've got their pinky on one side, that's when you wanna make sure you grab their fingers, you actually position their fingers underneath, just like that, and then you have them go from the basket to the palm, to the basket, to the palm. Pretty simple. Maybe do 20, 30, 40 of these. Their hand is gonna start feeling it. Their fingers are gonna start feeling it. Their wrist is gonna start feeling it. It's a really good way to get them used to having that shot in their hand and properly putting it in the basket. Once they're used to having it in the basket, now you've gotta get them used to the feeling of kind of that extended amount of time they're gonna be spending with that shot at practice. Because if they're taking you know, 20, 25, 30 plus throws, at a day of practice, their wrist, their hand, their fingers, they're gonna get a little banged up, they're gonna get used, they're gonna get a little beat up, and they have to get used to that. So how do we do it? The first thing we do, especially at our overnight camps, we annoy the discus throwers, okay? We have them take the shot, and we do what's called a waiter's walk. So you're gonna put the shot in the basket, you're gonna press it up overhead, just like this. Now when it's pressed up overhead, 
you can see now that it's back in camera, it's still in the basket. It hasn't slipped down to the palm. You're in the basket, you press overhead, and then I tell them to go walk around the, the discus cage to make the discus throwers mad. Here in the gym, when we're doing our indoor training, all we do is just have them walk around like this. Now, my athletes have left a mess today, so a little bit of an obstacle course to get around, but again, it makes it so that they're not thinking, they're not thinking about this thing in their hand. They're not thinking about the stretch they're feeling on their hand. A couple 10 pound dumbbells here from somebody doing some jumps. They're walking around, they're walking around, pretty simple. They're walking all around, obstacle course, all of a sudden, their wrist, their fingers, starting to feel that kind of bending back motion, starting to feel that stretch. It's not the best feeling in the world if you're not used to it. So you just have them come on back after a short amount of time, maybe a minute or so, have them come on back. When they get back, boom, they show you they still have all their fingers underneath the ball. They show you that it's still kind of feeling a little bit of pain, a little bit of stretch down here in their wrist and in their fingers, but that's how you get them used to holding it in that basket. The last part of this video is kind of an explanation as to what happens next. So when I'm at a camp or a clinic or an overnight camp and I'm working with a group, usually the, everybody has their own shot. But sometimes we have to pair two people up with one shot. And at that point, what I do is I have the athletes put the shot up against their necks. And pretty simple to explain, when you put the shot in the basket, we're gonna put that shot underneath the neck, right on the side of the neck, kind of underneath the jaw, ear area. It's a little bit different for everybody. We're all different heights, we're all different weight, we all have different size hands, we all have different size shots. We all have longer necks or no neck at all, big shoulders, narrow shoulders, or whatever. We're all a little bit different. But ideally, what you want is to have that shot on the side of the neck, not behind the ear, okay, kind of like on the back of your head, and not like underneath their chin like this. We want to see it right on the side. Some people are going to be, you know, a little bit more to the front. Some people are going to be a little bit more to the back. It's going to be different for everybody. So don't be like super dogmatic as far as it needs to be on this one particular muscle of the neck, this many centimeters in front of the opening of the ear. Like don't, don't go crazy with it. All right. Don't, don't go nuts trying to figure out the exact placement. Everyone's going to be different. So essentially what happens next is I have them put it up against the shot and I tell them that I want it to be a shot put sandwich. So shot put sandwich, meaning that the shot is the meat in the sandwich, okay? We want to see the fingers on one side, the neck on the other side. And then I simply have them take their thumb away. And if they take their thumb away, just like this, you can see that it's the fingers pushing up against the neck. It's not the thumb that's holding the shot up there. The thumb is underneath the shot at this point, but it's not what's holding it up there. It's not like they're just holding it up there with their thumb and it's resting against their shoulder. They have the fingers pushing the ball into the side of their neck. The thumb is just kind of there for a little bit of extra support. At that point, I will walk around and I'll walk behind everybody and I will make sure I see all four fingers behind the shot. So if I were to turn around, you gotta imagine you're walking behind me, you should be able to see all four of my fingers behind the shot. Now, I'm not as big as I used to be, so hopefully that's a little bit more clear compared to previous videos, but turn around, all four fingers are behind the shot. Sometimes the athletes will have their fingers under the shot and you can only see like two or three. This is not how you wanna hold this thing. You do not want the fingers under the shot because we know we wanna push the shot this way. And how are we gonna push the shot this way if our hand is pointing that away? Not gonna happen. You're gonna to have to twist and do some type of weird, crazy release at the end. We don't want that. All four fingers behind the ball, not underneath the ball. At the same time, we don't want the fingers on top of the ball. A lot of athletes, when they start off, they'll try to hold the shot something like this where they've got their fingers on top. And same thing, we want to throw the shot this way. We want to put it that way. 
We do not want to put it that way. So why do we have our hand on top? We want all four fingers behind the ball. And if your athletes can get all four fingers behind the ball, if your athletes can take their thumb away, and if your athletes are practicing doing those waiter's walks, carrying the shot in the basket, and doing a lot of pushing and flicking, that's going to get them set up, number one, to have nice strong wrists, nice strong fingers, and get used to actually holding this thing up against their neck and holding it up in their hand, but it's also gonna set them up to have a really smooth, really powerful release at the end of their full throws and get a lot more distance. Oh.